Hello and welcome back to Beckler Guitars and Repair. Uh, today we're going to be doing a mods and upgrades video on the Fender Deluxe Reverb reissue. So I've already put a Creamback Celestian in there and uh, I'm just trying to make this amp as, as good as possible. So one of the criticisms of this amp is it's a little bit bright at lower volumes. Uh, there's a bright cap in there that makes it a little bit trebly at lower volumes and uh, hard to take pedals at lower volumes as well. So what we're going to do today is open it up and uh, it's a really quick little mod. The, the biggest uh, hurdle is getting in there. So we're going to take apart the amp, find the exact capacitor that we need to clip, clip it, put it back together, see how it sounds. Pretty simple. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, first thing I want to do is just take the back panels off, so I'm just going to take all these screws out. Okay, next there's three screws up at the top here that connect the uh, chassis to the frame or the cabinet. Take those out. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is I'm actually going to take the baffle off, which holds the speaker, um, because there was another mod I read online that uh, you want solid wood to wood contact where the baffle mounts to the cabinet. Um, that provides some, uh, a little bit more mid range or something like that. I don't know if I believe it or if uh, that holds any water. But I figure it's a quick little mod that I can do, and if it improves the sound, great. So I'm going to take, there's four screws here that attach the baffle um, to the cabinet. And I'm just going to take those out and uh, see how that goes. Um, so this is the reverb tank hookup here. The little RCA, they're, it's white to white, red to red. It's just so I can get this whole thing out when I need to. And then it looks like this cord mounts to the side with a little screw there that's your power cord. So we're gonna wanna remove that as well. And uh, it's probably a good opportunity now to remove these power tubes. They're just gonna get in the way while we're trying to to work on it just to make sure I get them in the right order I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape on each one and just put one two three just so I know where they're going I don't want to mess up the order or anything like that okay And then to take them out, you just bend the uh, little tab here that holds it in there and just pull it out. Just wiggle, go slow. Uh, I also heard you're not supposed to get your hands on tubes. Uh, I don't know if that holds any water either, but just to be safe, I guess. All right, power tubes has been removed. And now, pull this up. There goes the speaker. All right, so I'm just gonna set that speaker aside. Now we take out the last four screws on the top here, and that's going to remove the chassis, or the, uh, the head component from the chassis. So. All 
All right, so there's nothing holding that in place anymore. So now I'm just gonna carefully remove the control panel. There we go. It's coming out pretty easy. There we are. Okay. So now, there it is. And the next step is removing these ribbons and removing this little con this little computer chip part from the the top and then it's just one little clip all right here we are with it on the workbench here <clears throat> so now i'm going to remove the the knobs and the washers and nuts for each knob Okay, all those are off. <clears throat> Next, I want to just carefully remove these ribbons. So there's like a little, um, a little port there where these clip into the other board. So just, just gently remove those. And this. And now this thing's ready to pop out. However, we are stuck right here. And there's a little um, clip there. So I'm just going to remove that so we can take this out. Just gonna use my clippers and be careful not to damage any wire. Okay. <clears throat> so those are free now. So now I'm just going to easily, uh, slowly take this little board out so I can uh, have a look. If there's one little pot here, it's giving me a little trouble because it's in the way. So it's located right here by the, I think this is the transformer. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that for now just so I can take that out easy, easier. Right there, pop that down. And slide it back. Okay, so that's out of the way now. I'm just gonna put it somewhere where it's not gonna get in my way. And now this is coming out easily. All right. And there we are, okay. So, <clears throat> now we've got the part of that we need for the brake cap. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, it's this little C10 right here, right next to, so, okay, let's just see here. That's how it came out. So this would be my, vibra my vibrato channel. So it's right next to your vibrato channel inputs. And it's a little capacitor here marked on the board, C10. And what you can do, is uh, you can clip it or you can just you know unsolder one leg and move it aside that way if you ever want to use it again um, it's pretty easy to just put back so I'm undecided what I'm gonna I got my soldering iron right here so why don't we just quickly unsolder it and set it aside for now and then if we ever want to go back in and change change it back we, it's no problem we don't have to clip anything so I'm gonna go ahead and heat up the soldering iron and we'll do that out of the cap here so that's gonna be this solder point and I'm just gonna hold on to it there and pull down and with my other hand I'm just gonna heat up that point so yeah, it should be quick and easy. Just waiting for my soldering iron here. Okay, here we go. So here we are, C10. 
and right here. And there we are. That is that. So, all that just to remove the one little leg of one capacitor and one part of the board. So, okay, I'm going to move it to the side so it's not in the way. And now we're going to reassemble. Okay, so this, ne this next mod, the idea is pretty simple. So right here, this is where the baffle, um, which is this piece of wood that mounts the speakers mounted to, connects to the amp, is right here. Where the wood connects is this little piece of wood here that connects it to the amp. So the theory behind this is, is that this contact should be wood to wood contact only. Um, making it more resonant, I guess, or I'm not sure the science behind it, but uh, it's an easy enough little mod that we can do quickly, and if it improves the sound, then great. Um, essentially, this grill cloth has been stapled uh, up and over to the side here, so that means that this grill cloth is getting in the way of the wood uh, in terms of like bear to bear contact. Um, and then so what the mod is, is essentially removing these staples. First off, using a staple gun to staple this side of the grill cloth, and then removing this excess grill cloth material so that this part of the wood lies flush against this part. And uh, it's a simple mod, it won't take long, and it, I mean, um, if it improves the sound, then great. If not, then I'm sure it won't do anything. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm willing to try it. Uh, this is the mod amp, so yeah, let's give it a shot. Okay, that took much longer than I anticipated, but it's okay. So here's what I did. I stapled the whole baffle um, very uh, the grill cloth very close to the edge so we have all that exposed wood where it's going to mount into the amp and I did this all the way around I removed the staples where they were before because they were folded over um, and then I cut the grill cloth to where it's now stapled all the way all the way around and then I looked at the cabinet where it mounts to the cabinet, like the baffle, um, I removed the Tolex. So right now, wherever the baffle is mounted to the amplifier, it's going to be wood on wood. So it was really easy removing the Tolex. I just used an X-Acto knife. I cut out the part I need and it peeled right off all the way around. Removing the staples was very easy. Um, I just used a, a pry uh, and then I pulled them out with a pair of pliers stapled all the way around the perimeter, and then I cut the grill, the grill cloth with scissors where it needed to go. So overall, very simple operation. Um, it just was a little bit time consuming, but um, I mean, probably took me about an hour to do everything, so not too bad. Now all that's left is just to reassemble the amplifier. So the, the head is all put together properly, and uh, the baffle is done. We're gonna mount everything. So all that's left is just to screw a bunch of screws to put everything back together. So I'm just going to keep 
the camera rolling and go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Okay, so we have everything back together and uh, it works. So that's good. There's nothing that feels worse than uh, putting back together a uh, project and then it doesn't work anymore. So um, that didn't happen, so that's great. So the whole point of the mod was at lower volumes, so I'm at two right now. Um, at lower volumes, this amp. Um, from factory can sound a little shrill, like a lot, uh, a lot of treble on there. So by cutting that treble cap, <clears throat> now uh, it's not on at lower volumes. So it's not a problem at higher volumes, I think past like five or six, but the lower volumes, uh, if let's say you're playing at home or a smaller gig and you don't want it to be too shrill, that, that helps out a lot. So here, um, here it is, I got the treble at like five or six, which normally would have to be like at one or two at, at this volume. So that's great. Um, it's also good for this lower volume to use pedals. So uh, a problem with that bright cap at lower volume is if you're using pedals, everything was super shrill. So I'm gonna put on my electroharmonic solo food. Let me just see how that sounds.
Uh, pretty easy mod to do yourself. I've never done anything like that before. I've never ripped apart an amp, let alone a modern amp um, with, uh, you know, circuit boards and stuff like that. Um, one thing you got to be aware of is uh, if you are going to be working on an amp like this, um, you have to... Something to do with the, the tubes and uh, it can hold enough power to shock you even though it's turned off. So what I did, what I read on the internet, again I don't really understand a lot about how this works, um, is I put, I unplugged the amplifier and then I put the standby on for quite a long time uh, to drain whatever kind of power, potential power might be in there. And then I don't believe you're going to have an issue with that, but uh, I really don't understand how it works. So just something to be aware of when you're working on tube amps is uh, it can be dangerous. So maybe do a little bit more research than I did just to make sure you don't shock yourself. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm happy with the way it sounds. Uh, I'm sure any little modification I can do to make it sound better, I'll, I'll do on this amp. So right now we've got the cream back speaker, the Celestion. Um, we've got rid of the bright cap so it sounds uh, less shrill and trebly at lower volumes. And uh, we've re removed the material on the sides of the baffling, uh, or the baffle, um, where it connects to the amplifier. So it's wood on wood contact. We have to remove some Tolex and then uh, staple the grill cloth, cloth back a little bit. Alright, so thanks. I think that'll be it for today's video. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Beckler Guitars and Repair, and uh, we'll have more for you really soon. Thanks a lot.